Okay, everyone, sorry we had a, a few problems there just with hosting the game at the start. So we're running a tiny bit late, but we should be okay now. Just make sure I've got my audio settings right. That should just about do it. Okay, so welcome to the heritage. Radiant this is TP to safety, representing the University of Nottingham versus UCL Esports. We'll cut the dilly dallying and get straight into the draft. Undying and Winter Wipe in the first two bands, and Tiny, interestingly, in the first phase of bands from UCL. Now, I've seen quite a few of TP's safety games. I don't remember ever seeing a Tiny. Maybe it's that, um, maybe it's, maybe UCL have had some bad experiences with them. I don't know. UCL would take the slot, huh? As their first pick, that's no surprise. TP safety have the TP safety have the chance to take the Lich here if they think they can get that into their lineup. Or well, they probably also have some other combos available as well. They won't have the Winter Wyvern. And the Darks here, but they will take Dazzle and Shadow Fiend. Very nice. Two picks that may well have been on the cards for UCL. The overall minus armor strap. Those three heroes. Pretty damn good. Ten seconds remaining. Just let me know in chat if there's any audio problems, if the levels are a bit wrong. Reserve time. Anyway, a quick first pick phase, we'll see what the second pans are. Windranger at your service. Radiant team back. Windranger picked up by UCL. Sorry, I've suddenly got a really sore throat. I'm just going to grab a drink. I'm sure you can look at the draft for a minute or two by yourselves. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. <sighs> Dire team back. Radiant team back.
Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Dire team pick. seconds remaining five seconds remaining reserve time Okay, and whilst I've gone, look what a mighty draft both teams have been able to pick themselves up with these third picks. Slardar Windranger Bane and a Dazzle Shadow Fiend Tusk. Ten seconds remaining. Now, Clockwork. the target gets Fiend's gripped and Windranger uses the focus fire. That's bad enough, right? But now imagine there's a amplified damage on that hero. Great single target burst already and quite a bit of control. Shackle shot, bashes, slithering crush, nightmare, fiends grip. Pretty nice so far. They'll probably want to pick up another AoE stun or slow of some kind. Ten seconds remaining. They've got the choice in their safe laner and another support so far. Quite a lot of the support's already been taken and quite a lot of the support's been removed. They'll pick up the Wraith King. Interesting. More often played as a core right now, but still totally fine, I'd say. As a support. DP safety, they'll pick up Clockwork as the offlaner. As the Darkseer was banned, and that is very much the LRM hero when I've seen this team play. UCL Esports do want to support. Let me think about what's left. Lion, Lena, still there. Lena support still worked out fine for a lot of teams when Ten the Lena is played as like a position four, and she's got them got the money from the fights. Usually, it and not. Unreasonable Radiant team time during the game. Yeah, it's not too long until they can pick up an agony receptor. I'm trying to get at. So the support Lena can work pretty well. A nice bit of control between the clockwork and the tusk here. They might want to pick up a little bit more in there. And their safe laner as well. Juggernaut. Dire team pick. They'll take the Juggernaut. Almost out of nowhere, Juggernaut's kind of reappeared as a solid carry, not the monster he was in 6.83, but a balanced good hero. And right at the end there, UCL will get their Lich. So this is going to be a pretty tough laning stage. 
for TP to safety, I'd say. They do have the Dazzle and the Tusk on hand. So good defensive potential by both. So here we are, let's get into the game. We could go through the teams, never don't give up playing the Shadow Fiend. Cook my sock on the Dazzle, Joff on the Juggernaut, LRM on the Clockwork and Cloud Reed on the Tusk. On the side of UCL we have Darian on the Bane, Dixon on the Wraith King, TJE on the Lich, Apache on the Wind Ranger and and Slada. Dyra moving down to the bot room. Do they have a smoke on someone, maybe? No? So they're just going to move into the Radiant Jungle, maybe hope to find someone in there without the smoke. They've got the Bane at the front line. But they're not going to find anyone here unless somebody veers wildly off from the Radiant team. They're waiting on their high, high ground up by the Ancients. begins. Every coin helps. Now four heroes at the top of the hill. LRM thought about it but he decided against it and ends up getting the first blood taken anyway. It seemed like he knew they were up there but thought that they should be moving away to their lanes by that point but it ends up being first blood to the Dixon Wraith King and that's going to be the safe lane farmer. So it is going to be a tri lane versus tri lane up here. Tusk, Dazzle, Juggernaut versus the Wraith King Bane Lich. Somebody trying to get in range for something there, but the Dazzle had. Dazzle hadn't leveled up anything, maybe he was thinking about the Poison Touch and the Ice Shards are still on cooldown. Bottom lane, this is a clockwork up against the Slardar. I'm not, I'm not really sure who. Who would win this lane? I'm probably side with the clockwork there. Though he's certainly not going to completely stop the slot off from farming. Certainly not going to push him out of XP range. Lane Shadow Fiend already got its way to level 3. Done pretty well in these these first few waves. Almost on the same level as the Wind Ranger. 6 and 2 versus 6 and 4. Both the carries farming pretty well in the safe lane right now. In the dire safe lane. But Bane, rather than going for the Brain Sap, has gone for the level 2 Enfeeble to try and slow down the Juggernaut. He doesn't have a leveling crit yet, so he is on pretty low damage. He might pick up something else to help with. <laughs> He's got the Orb of Venom, I don't know. 
that's going to solve that particular problem, but... Flat work bottom has used up a lot of his mana. In a few cogs to try and keep the slaughter away from a uh, rush depth of mana. Slaughter looking for the first blood now. Does he? Oh, he's already used the, the longest rays. Juggernaut now struggling to bomb with the feeble there. Not really anything the supports can do about that. Well, it's not going to be a lane with fantastic kill potential. Oh dear, when the Juggernaut comes out of his spin there, he's going to be going down almost for sure. Both the saves used at the same time there. Oh dear, the salve instantly cancelled, I think, by a creep. It does end up being a one for one. The Juggernaut for the Bane, not an ideal trade. Juggernaut doesn't get the experience either. So that will be a favourable trade for UCL on this tri lane. These, these two supports, not very good kill supports, but great for stopping the opposing carry from farming the sacrifice to give him less creeps and the enfeeble just to stop him from getting whatever creeps he can get to. LRM pops a pops a battery assault. Juggernaut. Okay. Didn't even notice that as it was happening. Takes out the Wraith King. So that's gonna be the trial lane pretty much even now. Eventually the Eventually the sacrifice should pay off in these heroes getting behind. They are already level 3s versus 2 level 4s. So far it's looking okay. We quite often see supports at this point only being level 1 or 2. And these are two tri lane supports. I've already got their way to level 3 with picking up a kill on the Bane and on the Wraith King. Cloud Reed and the Tusk looking for a nice shard. So we'll find one just yet. Mid lane, going pretty much as expected, Shadow Fiend struggles a little bit in the first few waves but when he gets his souls up, now on 29, it becomes a very difficult lane for the Windrunner. Level 6, achieved by both the offlaners here. Lot work, that's the bottle, we'll go and pick up a rune. See how soon he wants to rotate. Doesn't find a ganking rune. Oh, now he does. He gets a haste when the six minute rune spawns. So he's full mana and haste active. Gonna try and find the Wind Ranger here, but oh dear, this isn't the time. Lag on the UCL side, and this might give Windrunner the, the little bit of a moment to realize that Lotwork's gone and she needs to be on the lookout. I don't think she'll be able to see from across the river, no, not even close because it's night time, but I'd say a uh, pretty fortunate timing for UCL to have like that right there, probably saving the mid lane there with the boss. Tusk posturing to go on top lane here. Wraith King approaching level 5. Slaughter should, report, should be reporting that the clock won't went missing right now. This will be seen here by this ward. So he'll quickly back away, although Bane is chasing, trying to get a nightmare. I'm not going to bother stunning him, stunning him up just yet. Shadow Fiends, the Wind Ranger doesn't get back to Clockwork. 
Hook goes in. I was completely convinced that that would be dodged, but it doesn't work out like that. Hook connect and kill for the Shadow Fiend. Level 7 now, max raises. Bot lane tranquil still a bit for the Slardar. Clockwork walking back in. Still got plenty of mana to play with. But not going to be able to catch up with the Slardar sprint. He wants to try for a battery assault. He's going to need to buy some face boots or wait for a hook. Bane has moved out of this top lane and so is the Lich. He's moving back to base. Didn't actually catch a sacrifice on the way there. Would have had a chance for one if we waited around just for a couple of seconds, but. Now Slardar. I think he must have prepared himself this triple stack here. I didn't see any of this going on. Attentive caster. Um He'll farm that up. Now he's level 8. It's just the Wraith can come here now and he. He will not be able to farm anymore, and now Juggernaut will get the rune to farm and catch up on what he didn't get because of the sacrifice and the enfeeble. And now there are three supports mid. Dyer's no smoke. Is under attack. Wards and sentries and the Lich. Bane did place a ward bot. Top tower taking quite a bit of damage. Bottom lane, LRM has gone in. Onto the Slardar, taking a lot of damage. Hook shots, but oh no! Not like this! The shards push him to the wrong side, but LRM will get to salve up. Lots of pings coming out in the river. Cloudery just moved his way down to bot lane. Clockwork. Not really needing the XP, any XP anymore. Now he's level 8. That's the second point in the rocket flare. Gone for the, uh, the Bulba school. With Max in the battery assault. And now there is a smoke. Who supports in the mid? I'm going to try and find the Shadow Fiend here, but he's really, really close to the mech. He will have the recipe before he dies to the gank, if he does die to it. But it's flying out now, he won't have the mana to use it when he gets here, he will have the buckle. That two armor. Maybe all the difference. You know he's farming this. Lich is pinging and pinging, but neither of these neither of his buddies wanna go. I'm gonna send the illusions in first, but Shadow Fiend might even back Dyer's up to base when he takes this creep. Wind Ranger Illusion does get the last hit. Look how far the Shadow Fiend is twice the CS. Anyone else in the game almost. Top lane, Wraith King is level 7. He hasn't used Reincarnate yet. Juggernaut is going to try and get rid of the Reincarnate with just the spin. He does have a Mango if he wants to hold, but not going to have a chance yet. LRM misses a hook shot there. Shadow Fiend was coming up behind. They're going to try and take out this Wraith King. But TP support is here. Bane first. But it's all three cores in the top lane right now. And I don't know if you can be too hopeful. Not losing any heroes right here. Now Spin goes out first to take out the Reincarnate. And now I think we'll be looking for, looking for the Omni Slash. All the hits actually go on to the Wind Ranger, but... She's not dead yet, and there's no mana left for raises and no mana for the mech on the Shadow Fiend. He came into this fight without having enough, and meanwhile, Botlane Slardar takes out the Tusk. This isn't the, isn't the kind of movement that TP were trying to make. Nottingham lose two heroes. You do get the tower, but that low level rocket flare, not enough to finish off any of these heroes. Dyer's 
Tower's middle tower is under attack. Thank you, Mr. Mid finally gets his level 4. He's really been hurt by the rotations. SF gonna try and get this mid tower. Tusk is gonna be here. And two, two TPs, but they're too late. Ben can't get in range for a nightmare, and that's for a for Dire Heroes mid for nothing so far. Slaughter, only 100 gold from his link. He'll probably go and farm up a neutral camp to get that. Smoke used Shadow Fiend and Tusk. They're inside that. They're gonna hunt for something to find the stack. Gonna decide whether the Shadow Fiend wants to take that or whether they wanna go for the Wraith King. Looks like the Wraith King is gonna be the choice and Juggernaut is here too. Snowball first. Nice shot to keep him in and Spun down, Shadow Fiend gets the last hit. Flat work at the side. Wants to try and catch the Bane, but he's on the right side of the Greek wave here. Unfortunately, hits the range group there. It was a little bit too soon, maybe because expecting the range group to move a bit faster. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. No pressure coming all over the map. TP to safety suddenly. Every hero on UCL happens to farm pretty defensively if they're farming at all. out from the Juggernaut, it's not enough to kill the Lich. The Omni Slash was there. Decides not to waste it in the middle of a bunch of creeps now. Slardar blinks forwards on the Juggernaut, he doesn't want to get Omni Slash. Bye, nerd. I'm out of here. Now, we'll kill the healing ward, and that will be a dead Juggernaut. It's a nice chase by Damien, and who I have been told is called Dumplings, I have a... I have no reason not to believe that, so... That's the Slardar's name for you, but... Let's gonna throw the level 1 armor onto the tower. Try and slow down this push. Shadow Fiend. Great hook shot by LRM, oh my god, hits on three! Look at that Requiem, double raises! Literal still bouncing around, the mech will get used and that's... Wraith King going down, will have mana for another stun, but he'll kinda use it on the wrong target there, use it on the Tusk. Now, Wraith King is kinda trapped in, he's on the wrong side of his tower, but Slaughter doesn't think so. I'm not trapped in here with you! You're trapped in here with me! Tusk! Flies back. I don't know what's going on here. The ice shards are in the wrong place. The crush down hits on both heroes. Shadow Fiend explodes. And now another Omni Slash at the end of this fight, but he's not going to be able to catch up with the Slardar. Slardar's going to turn back for the crush, but is there a crit? No, there isn't. Only the Perseverance not giving him enough damage here. And now Wraith King chasing down for some more kills. This is an absolute mess. TP to safety just getting slaughtered throughout all of this. More heroes running in one by one by one. It's the chain feed. Joff is still alive on the Juggernaut, but he doesn't have enough mana to do anything. He's got one spin, but he can't get in range to do it. I don't even know what that was in the end. Three for nothing, okay. Well, 1,200 gold for the Wraith King, 700 for the Slardar. What an absolute mess. So close to being really good. Really good. Well, it wasn't a 3 for nothing, was it? The fight recap didn't show the whole story there.
It was a double kill on the Shadow Fiend amidst all that. Him losing his streak is why the Wraith King got so much gold. Maybe it was TP safety sticking around a little bit too long. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Stack's been farmed up now by the Wraith King in the Wind Ranger. Shadow, Shadow Fiend did have a ch chance to take these, but turned it down to get the Wraith King instead earlier. Now the Wraith King did have to use his ult in that fight, and it, it hit level 11 during that fight, so kind of inefficient reincarnation usage patterns. He's got two minutes where he can't use it. He's just going to farm for that time. He's got an arm like nothing else on the courier, I don't think, so Wraith King kind of poor right now. Yeah, he's third on the net worth, significantly behind the Shadow Fiend. On par with his off laner. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. LRM probably wants to find a hookshot. He had a really good one in that last fight. Caught out like the Bane, the Wraith King, and the Lich or something. It's a spin going on somewhere. Juggernaut spins away from the Slardar trying to crush. What's coming out in the courier? What was just delivered? Another smoke. He's tryhards, eh? I think they're dandies or something. There is a radiant ward on top of this hill, so if this is where they decide to smoke, it's not going to work for him. Now clockwork. Invis rune. Nice sign for it. At the side here. There's a dire sentry on top of this hill, so depending on where he walks, he may get spotted. Not all the rest of his team have already backed way out. And the dire will know it. They give up on this fight and made their way towards the jungle. But we're looking for a solo pickoff. And the Wind Rangers see him right now, not quite. And now we'll get spotted. Lich building up for the mechanism on the dire side. Wim Ranger, more than halfway to the ice now. Pings! Ping ping! Shadow Kings picked up a Yasha. Just needs to find a little bit of, a, of attack speed to make the 72 soul damage. Work its magic and now the smoke is here, but I think he got seen. I think this line from Cloud Breed is judging its probable traje trajectory. Dazzle liable to be caught out here, but instead they'll turn back into Roshan. Rip and things it out. He's got the reincarnation. And this will be going down. Oh so fast. Rid of about 800 there from the double damage Wraith King. Minus 20 armor. The Roshan. However much it was. 15. But Radiant didn't care about all that. They moved their heroes up to the top lane. Just can Shadow Fiend up here. Plot were not far away. Now TP in from the Wraith King. Is he on Blink Tag now? 2400 gold. He's picking up if he wants it. Hasn't done so yet. And the Radiant will just move away from from here. Small ancient stat to farm if that's what they feel like. Blade Fury is done on the Juggernaut, Blink Dagger is picked up. On the Wraith King. See if the Juggernaut goes for the Blink Dagger next. That's been kind of the standard Chinese build. The Battle Fury Blink Dagger. No. So I was trying to get a kill onto the Lich top lane, but not going to be enough. Main TP's up just in case. Slada moving forwards, wants to catch the Tusk on the way out. He stays in lane, he's going to be in trouble. I don't think he quite got spotted there, the night vision. 
really limited. Let's get out. Now this Shadow Fiend seems to be all over the map. From bot to top to bot in two minutes. Shackle does hit. On the side, LRM throws out the power card, which drains a little bit of the Slardar's mana. Link forwards, there it is, he does hit. Tusk tries to save the Juggernaut from some of his damage, and now the Requiem was really good. Chain, ice, uh, chain Frost is good though, bouncing between a lot of heroes. I don't think Juggernaut got a chance to use an Omnislash there. No, he didn't have the mana for it. He is great going out on the clockwork. Reincarnation has already been used. But now here's the uh, here's the Wind Ranger coming back, but takes so much damage so fast, the heal bomb. A pounding from the SF. And the Walrus Punch, she'll be going down, and that was actually five lives taken by TP to safety, and now they're going to go high ground. we only got the Bane with no Fiend's Grip, and a Wraith King with only one life, they can probably take a lane of Rax here. Slardar will be up in 12 seconds. LRM will see the, see the Bane TP in. in. They're going to take the tier 3, and then they're going to back out. Illusions will be popped and they'll do a little bit of damage to the range tracks. Won't regenerate. And now after that fight, a commanding and convincing position being taken by TP to safety. That was the fight they were looking for. Now the gold graph approaching 10k in their favour. Dyer's top tower is under attack. LRM has the four staff already. Won't even bother going for the blade now this game, we're going straight in for the Agnim Scepter. That's the point booster and another 1200 gold. How's that Wind Ranger doing on her eggs? That will get completed. The Aegis she had in that fight. Up here, stay alive long enough to gather a little bit of money. Shadow Fiend now has a Manda style and more illusions in the bottle. Spawning clones all over the map. Pretty much Meepo confirmed. We'll take a lot of damage, the Juggernaut nowhere near to try and give the healing ward, which is only level 1 anyway. Juggernaut will just be going in for the Yashin next, I think that'll be finished now. Yeah, that's coming in on the Courier. Those will be quickly popped by the Lich. Attempt at a nightmare onto the Shadow Fiend now. Then I think it gets fogged. That chance won't be won't be too much. We've started to stack up the stack up the armor. Shackle shot doesn't land. LRM plot work on the high ground now. Fiend's grid. Out of the Shadow Fiend, but this isn't the time for it, but he <laughs> Shadow Fiend! Pops his BKB, uses the Requiem, one of Wraith King's lives is gone, but that's anticlimactic. ECL call lag. And Shadow Fiend did pop the BKB and then get put into the snowball by Tusk. Maybe a little bit of crossed wires there, but it will be too bad to weave now, providing an extra 14 armor across all these heroes. Wraith King three seconds from from becoming alive. How's his blink go down? Three seconds, so he will have it up. Is there a spin? No, nobody's to give him mana. They might just chase down the Slardar here. The Shadow Fiend. 
battery assault. Probably will be able to find a way to stop this Ray King from blinking away, but they do want to get the Slardar as well, who's only 300 gold away from his, his own BKB. Slardar farming pretty well this game, both the offlaners. Because they were largely left alone in a 1v1, managed to fit, pick up a lot of CS in lane and turn that into pretty decent kill potential, kill participation I'd say. 7 out of 10 for Slardar. 6 out of 11 meh for the clockwork. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Dyer's structures are fortified. Dyer's top tower has fallen. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Radiant's middle tower is under attack.
Dyer's top tower is under attack. Ah yeah, I've been talking muted since the pause, great, perfect. Thanks for letting me know anyway. Ugh! Oh. Okay. Coming in. We're taking a long time since he's picked up any proper, proper items. He picked up the armor and the blink dagger. A hype stone the plate mill since he's pretty close to the ACD finished. He's the other old writer and the recipe, so he's like. Should be able to get it now, actually. Just to save the mana. And now, the fight is really here to break out. LRM finds the Wind Ranger on the wrong side, and look at this fantastic placement of the cogs. Split the fight completely in two. Bane and Brave King on the wrong side can't do anything to save their allies being torn apart by the Shadow Fiend, and now. Would he just look at that? Blink away by the Wraith King. No AoE damage to take him out there. The clockwork, he's got another hook. You thought you got away. You were mistaken. Dazzle comes in with a heal bomb. Husky's in the middle of all that. Juggernaut spins, clockwork gets the last bit of damage necessary and it will have to wait a little bit for a creep wave. We'll nuke down this one, but we should be going high ground with this. Sleep onto the Juggernaut. Nice shackle, gets onto the two corners, but what are you trying to do with this? Lardar just respawns now. He's sprinting towards battle. Trying to take down the melee rat. It's not being taken very quickly. Neither of these heroes got huge damage. Both with the man styles. Slardar gets a crush onto the clock work. He can be popped by the Slardar, but he's taken a lot of physical damage for it. Chainfrost bouncing around. Manta pop to try and tag up a little bit of that. Lich will get ploughed down by the Juggernaut. LRM hooks up to the top. Lich gets caught, Juggernaut spinning after the Windranger, you're going to look for a crit or two here, doesn't find it, turns back to finish off the Raid King, who's trapped in the cogs and the ice shards. Plot work when he use a hook to make sure that's his, a buyback on the Bane is used, Juggernaut captures the Windranger with the Omni Slash at the end of that. And Juggernaut nightmare up, but I think the worst and buyback to use there. Bye bye by the Wind Ranger, bye bye by the Bane. Bane is the only person alive right now and in the time it takes for the Wind Ranger and the Wraith King to respawn, this is gonna be three sets of racks, they even pop a smoke to get that little bit of distance covered faster and Slada. What can you do buddy? Show us your chops, you've got your BKB, but he's not even gonna go in, he's just gonna defend down the air and that's basically the GG, the GG call made by the Slardar on behalf of the Dire team. That will be the Mega Creeps. Now the Dire are probably going to go for one last draw here. Look at that, that's nice. Um, Shadow King got the Mega available, LRM. Where does he hook to? It was onto the Slardar who will just about be able to TP away. The physical damage of the clockwork almost enough to take him out. Now Shackle Shot dodged by the Juggernaut. Don't get Fiend's Grips. 
Near the base. <laughs> Look at pushed in with a full staff. That was Clockworks full staff as well. <laughs> the good game is called Juggernaut. It does get taken down in the end, but. The UCL gradually falling further and further behind throughout that game. They did get a couple of good movements, like the gank onto the Shadow Fiend in the jungle, which I tried to say as I was muted. But the items never really came out, the Wraith King extremely slow to pick up that Assault Kuras. Maybe it would have been worth him picking up something else in the meantime. Well, convincing game one, and I will see you all after the break. When did it become okay to be the same? Did we choose to have no choice? To be average, ordinary, or do we still have the bravery it takes to do something no one else is doing? We are honor. And we are brave. Are you? Are you brave enough to be yourself when everyone else is being everyone else? Gurus, shiny logos, designer prices. Are you brave enough to demand an alternative? Yesterday's technology, slow speeds and inferior displays. Are you brave enough to expect more? Are you brave enough to make a change for the better? Honor, clearer. Further, faster, for the brain. Okay. We're coming in about halfway through the draft here. At the start of the first game, I questioned why UCL might want to ban Tiny, and here's the reason, because TP to Safety wanted to first pick the Tiny Wisp. And here we go, they've done it. UCL this time. They ban out the Doom and the Re Doom and the Dark Seal. Let me just make sure my audio is right in game. Looks like it's going out through Twitch. We Gucci. Um, Tusk Wind Ranger on the UCL side, obviously happy with uh, Wind Ranger's performance last game. Um, certainly not like the Wind Ranger made bad plays or lost in the game. It's just that their overall dra draft left them so far, or the way the game went, Ten left them so far nine. behind that they, the Wind Ranger didn't have space Five to make any picks. Remaining. Let's say that. Um, Winter Wyvern and Slardar banned by TP to safety. Slardar did cause them some issues last game. If there was anything that really gave Nottingham some trouble here, it was the Slardar. So that will get banned out in the first phase. The Winter Wyvern is taken out too. AA and Viper both banned. The Viper, I can understand banning that against a tiny IO, tiny Wisp mid. Viper can pretty much beat that on his own. Winter and Apparition. Um, we'll see what their other core is. Do they have room to pick an alchemist here? I don't know. Um, but they do have a lot of heals coming in from the Wisp and from the Undying Soul Rip, so... Okay. Ancient Apparition would have worked well against that, and Ancient Apparition is just a super annoying hero to play against remaining. anyway. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Now for the rest of the draft, the uh, the, uh, the Earthshaker gets banned and the Magnus got banned. The Magnus pretty understandable, the Magnus generally not picked so much for the RP anymore, the RP is a nice little spell to have on the side. Um, generally picked mostly for the Empower and on top of the Tiny who already has Cleave from the Ags. Make for a pretty formidable foe. 
Queen of Pain picks up my TP to safety and Dazzle will get the fourth pick. Sorry, and UC will get the fourth pick Dazzle. They get the Gyrocopter as well. The a lot of heroes are making it through to the second phase without being touched. A lot of Ten seconds kind of high remaining. value heroes, but I guess that just shows the versatility of this patch. There are so many heroes remaining. that can be so valuable. There are no heroes that have been picked up in this game so far that aren't potentially first ban material, I'd say. Five seconds remaining. Night Stalker. You see I'll Radiant get the Night Stalker last. Now, that means either a core Night Stalker or a core Tusk. They all want run up yeah, one of true. those heroes roaming around very early. Centaur picked up as the offlaner by Nottingham. Interesting to see how UCL run the Tusk Dazzle Night Stalker. One of the Tusk Gyrocopter Dazzle Night Stalker is going to have to be a solo lane, so it might end up being a Night Stalker. We're doing aggressive tri lane. Tusk Dazzle Gyro or Night Stalker Dazzle Tusk or Gyro Dazzle Night Stalker. I really have no idea what combination of lanes we might decide to run here. An aggressive tri lane would only be going aggressive against the Centaur. So they might try and put more attention onto roaming onto mid, maybe have the Tusk doing that just from minute one and then the Night Stalker moving over when it hits night time at four. We'll see. Anyway, enough speculation. We're into the second game. The person who I have been reliably notified Prepare for battle. It's called Dumplings on the Night Stalker. Fat G on the Gyrocopter. Darien on the Tusk, Dixon playing the Wind Ranger and TJE on the Dazzle. Over on the Radiant, University of Nottingham, one game ahead, never don't give up on the Tiny Cloud, Reed on the Wisp, LRM playing the Queen of Pain, Cook My Sock on the Undying and Joff, last game playing the safe lane farming Juggernaut, this game on the off lane Centaur, LRM maybe a little bit more, com more comfortable on the Queen of Pain. Now there's the smoke. And all these heroes, the dire, they want to make something happen. Centaur's a little bit far away from all this. He will be able to move back in and the clash is coming. Who are they going to put at the front? It's the Wind Ranger right now, but that's always a little bit behind the shackle. It does hit onto the tiny, but it's not very long. The stomp and the avalanche kind of wasted. They go on top of each other. Yeah, well, that's going to be the first blood. Darien on the tusk gets taken down super fast. Gyro trying to get some damage through but none of it, it's all been spread out onto loads of different heroes and looks like that's going to be the end of it. The tombstone was dropped and it was killed super fast. Tiny gets the rune, will he get punished for this? He throws the avalanche, the stomp goes, Tiny running the wrong way but he trying to get these kills and he's going to get killed by the dazzle there. A lot of damage flying through the Ranger. Being chased down, there's no decay here, only the tombstone was leveled up and that went for him a clean first blow to the Radiant going into the Rivering. Getting slaughtered, the Tiny and the Undying going down wasn't quite worth the bounty rune I don't think. Wisp, after all that, does have a bottle I think. Wisp got the first blood there. Now as the lane settle out. Night Stuck will be moving bottom right now, we'll probably stay there until it hits night time. It is the Dazzle behind the Wind Ranger mid to try and help out against this, uh, this dual lane, trying to get the double stack here. I think it will work. Yep. Avalanche and toss back. Io doesn't have the, uh, Spirits just yet. But she doesn't, uh, the Wind Ranger doesn't have Wind Run, so we'll just get smacked up by the Tiny. Here we go. Mid lane starting out pretty difficult. Ranger TPing back in towards mid. 
and we'll just get avalanched up again straight away. But the heal bomb onto the tiny, that does a lot of damage. Measly tiny with his meal, meager one armor. Bot lane center on Nightstalker. Nightstalker's taken the early point in return. Trying to survive up against. Sorry, Sen. Yeah. Mm hmm. Top rune. Tusk came in. Did a lot of damage to the tiny, but it didn't end up being enough. Dazzle has the clarity on him. We'll just have to walk away. Wisp won't really have the heals for the tiny right now. There. Treading a thin line. I think Wisp maybe used some bottle charges on himself just then without, without having low enough health to make it work. Queen of Pain. LRM with the Undying gets a kill onto the Gyro Cup so they drop the Tombstone. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Dazzle here, only level 2. Same with the Tusk. No Grave upon the Dazzle yet, he's going to try and get some XP from this wave as the Gyrocopter walks his way back out. Doesn't want to spend that money on the TP. Interesting choice to make. Nightstalker and Centaur. Centaur really winning on the CS right now, Nightstalker looking like he was doing some good harass to try and keep the Centaur away earlier, but as it is, Centaur is doubling up the Nightstalker on CS. Nightstalker has a lot of denies, but missing a lot of actual last hits to get him to try and keep the Centaur in line. Let's see if that ends up being worth it. It's about to be night time. 2 on 1 on the Nightstalker and dying moves his way mid. Gets a kill onto the Tusk, the Dazzle's going to be dying at the end as well. Will he be able to get the Tiny? Tiny actually dies too. A creep. Undying uses the Soul Rip to take out the Windranger, so that's a 3 for 1 in the mid lane. Only the Tiny goes down whilst kills all three of the Dire Heroes there. No nighttime hit. And Nightstalker immediately ramps up the aggression onto the centaur. Mid lane, they're going again. This is trying to make the save onto the Wind Ranger who won't use the shackle yet. We'll try it. We'll I don't know what that was. I think it was a creep to the tiny. Toss, oh it went to the wrong target, that is unfortunate. Nice Stalker got the centaur pot, so two dying around the map for Radiant. It's just the damage increase and the movement speed increase. Sorry, the attack speed and the movement speed. The Night Stalker just meaning the centaur that was previously doing really well, now falling behind. Gets killed, CS is evened out. And now Nightstalker is 6 when the Tiny is only 5. Unfortunately, never don't give up and misses another toss. Tiny Wisp only level 4 right now. It is a dual lane, sometimes being a tri lane mid, but they are struggling for, struggling for levels right now. Top lane, Queen of Pain. Top of the CS, 16 and 12. Kind of dominating this gyrocopter right now. And Dying was trying to. Was hoping that the gyro moved forwards. We now we're going to try and turn around onto the tiny. There's double damage here. Tiny wants it and he'll get it. Maybe just to stop anyone else from getting it. Give the uh, give the dazzle some smacks. Windranger gets the kill onto the tiny. They should be able to take out the Dazzle here. They do get him and let's see if they can catch the Windranger as well. There's no zombie on him, so they're gonna go for the Tusk instead. The Urn up on the Io gets the kill, but Nightstalk has made his way here. It's night time, guys. Daywalker Nightstalk gets the kill. Queen of Pain commits the ult. 
takes out the Chirocopter, just kills going on all over the map. I don't 16 kills in six and a half minutes. This is Dota. Heal onto the Night Star Cruiser, he gets quite a bit of decay and soul root damage there. But Night Stalker ready to charge in once again from the side. Wisp here. Ready to heal at the tiny tiny a long way out now. The toss and the avalanche do connect. Shackle not there yet, but here's Night Stalker. You've gone out way too far. Centaur Stampedo up the hill. Wow. The damage mitigation from the overcharge was enough to keep the tiny alive through that power shot. He's only level two. Three points in win run, that's not efficiency. Four dire heroes mid throughout all that. Nobody bot lane. Creeps. Creep warfare. Centaur currently sat mid. Wisp waiting to make some more stacks. Won't get him yet. Wind Ranger looking for the top rune. Let's see if they can try and catch him out here. Not yet. Night Stalker has a bottle. Only gets the bounty. The Wind Ranger gets an illusion, so. I'm very lucky on the. For the Radiant, that there's no DD or haste throughout all of that. Now toss back. Wind Ranger on the Radiant high ground to turn. Balls! Heavy balls from the Wisp. The bigger ball comes in to try and take him down, but he's not taking that much damage. He will, will get taken down. Tiny gets the toss onto the Wind Ranger. He does go down in the end. So, it's the Wisp or the Wind Ranger. Nice little trade in the mid lane there. Queen of Pain now 34 and 18, really keeping the Gyro down. Gyro right now. Forced to stack and pull all by his lonesome. Only level 6. Not even got the ring of a killer finished yet, still needs a recipe. It is daytime. Night Stalker considerably less spooky for the time being. But it did make quite the impact there. 3 0 and 1 in that first night time. Tiny and Wisp will farm up that stack. Drum is purchased. Wind Ranger looking for a shackle from the side, but it's only level 1. There's no focus fire either. Unlikely that this Wind Ranger is going to be able to make any significant catches here, and Dazzle is disconnected. Finally, pick up the finish ring of a killer. Brown boots and ring. Okay, we'll cut to a short break.
Okay, we're back in. Gyro died once more. To the Queen of Bane, but the clock was caught afterwards, only a level 2 blink, so she didn't have time to get back out there. Tusk and Dazzle take her out. Nice 600 gold for the Dazzle there. Night time is popped by the Night Stalker. <laughs> Horrifying noise he makes when he, pop when he uh, pops the darkness. I don't think I've heard that before. A hideous hero, look at his face. Avalanche. Toss, just up into the air, not back. Queen of Pain blinks forwards. Where's the Q? Now nah, the ult is pop. See you later, buddy. Nice try, Centaur to disengage. Centaur ult to disengage, sorry. Night Stalker punished for his hubris. LRM takes him out. Takes the killing spree. Gyro toss back. Gone in no time. And charge. Committed for the efficiency. Wind Ranger pushed away. Get out of here. Relegated to bottom lane. Might be able to scrape together some monies. Tiny, knocking on the door of the front tarot. Kills me, sir. Dazzle, sir, we are here to collect your manails. No stopping in Gyro. They get the cooldown on the shackle. Once the Queen of Pain. Nice little catch. The relocate, just get the Tiny out. Snowball, making a little bit of room for the Tusk. Undying is here. Toss. Avalanche, tiny, 5, 3, and 6. We'll get smacked in the face by the infinite range. Missile. Night Stalker at the bottom of this hill. We're back into a natural night time now. Wind Ranger. Focus Fire was committed in the fight, so the tower will go down a bit more slowly, but I don't think the Radiants are going to give anything to defend. I think they're just going to try and delay. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Now, the Radiant are farming and fighting better than the, the Dire are at the moment. Let's see if this is going to be enough to Stampede. Fantastic timing from Joff. Stampede's been on point every single time. Save the Wisp there, save the Tiny before, save the Queen of Pain once as well, I think, or maybe guaranteed a kill. And now, has the money for his Blink Dagger. This is maybe where the Centaur gets involved in the fights. And I was saying that the Radiant are win winning on our uh, arm and kills. But uh, what I was about to say is it seems like maybe they don't... They're certainly not committing to a game plan right now. But with the relocate, maybe this is the time Tiny has a blink. Oh, damn! Night Stalker, see you later. Centaur waits for a TP in. Gets a stomp on two, but gets quickly taken out. Relocate just about. Saves the Tiny and the Wisp there. That was extremely close. That was too close for comfort. Cloak picked up. By the IO. Nearly has enough for the Glenna now. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Let's see what the Tiny wants to go for next. Has room for the Agonims if. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Dyer's middle tower has fallen. Well, we are finally back in the game. Tiny gets the last hit on the mid tower there and just blinks himself back out. Dyer's top tower has been denied. Helicopter still really struggling to farm. Only picked up a bracer. Since his ring of a killer, they're gonna go for a smoke to try and make up for that. Go on this tiny and wisp will be pretty nice.
It was a smoke pops, but it looks like they might have given up on it after that pause. They're just gonna stand behind the mid lane. Oh, someone TPs to defend it. But the Radiant happy to push down the bot lane right now. Rim Rage are not pushing fast enough. No agonims. One of the level one focus fire. Dyer's bottom tower. Tiny instant blows at the Dazzle before he can get any heals or a shallow grave off. Tiny will take down the tower, but he's shackled right at the front here, but he's getting healed so much. TP back to base. Oh my god, that's the combo! Centaur gets a stomp on four heroes. Double edge onto three. LRM on the Queen of Pain gets a sonic wave. Level two tears through all of those heroes. That was a crazy amount of damage. Cloud Reed saves Never Don't Give Up's Tiny. Relocates him back to base. Huge heals from him. Stick, ch stick charges in the bottle. Undying gives him a level 2 soul rip. What a crazy fight. Fantastic execution from the University of Nottingham there. Thought the Tiny was just going to be straight out of there, trapped at the front. And Gyrocopter and Nightstalker laying into him, but... It all works out just fine, and here we go. Look at that. Wow. About 12k net worth lead now. They're going to take down another tower. Missile following... <laughs> nice look at option for the Midas. Let's hope this doesn't affect his kind of early game ability, early to mid game ability to get involved in these fights. Night Stalker will drop off if he doesn't pick up a few items and with this Midas, all he's got going for him really is the attack speed. She's already getting a lot off from Hunter in the night. Queen of Pain now has the finished Orchid. That's the three bottle charges and the nine stick charges to uh, fill up a mana here. We may go for the Night Stalker. I'm not sure whether they've seen him yet or not. Now she blinks in. Quick takedown. Centaur follows up. Tusk. Rolls in, but I'm not sure this is where he really wants to be. Shackle doesn't connect. Centaur, blink forward from the tiny, takes out the tusk in a quick combo. Another drum charge used. Invisible Wind Ranger here. Gonna look for a shackle, but she's not gonna be able to kill anyone here. Maybe we'll be able to find someone out of place here. Dazzle! What? Or was that the super early shallow grave in anticipation of the tiny combo, but he's just gonna get taken down at the end of that Queen of Pain ult just to make sure. Secured. Now Wing Ranger. Oh dear, Tusk, no, not like this. That wasn't a save. That was an anti-save. That was a get killed. Wing Ranger goes down. Looked like she was out of there. Tiny mid lane. I want that last wave. Now there's a relocate. Is it just good to get a relocate to go back to base? Get the mana back up. Huge monstrous rock golem. Teleported around. Wisp has another 2k. 
on top of his glimmer cape. And he has the axe, I've got some poor stuff. Excuse me. Get the kill main game audio is a little bit too loud right now, so I'm just gonna... Dire. I'm not even gonna try to contest this. Wind Ranger slowly farming up the jungle. So far behind in items. The net worth difference now 12k XP, almost 20. It will be 20 after the Roshan goes down. Look at how even this game was until then. It was only a. Mm, actually, I say it was even. This long gap here was all a pause, and this gap was all a pause, so I guess there was. And I think this is a pause here as well, so I guess it was a pretty constant flow going the way of the Radiant. But it's accelerated rapidly since then. A bunch of towers been taken, that massive 5 man wipe. Now there's an Aegis on the Tiny. And are there any more key items that Ready is going to want to wait for? The Queen of Pain. A thousand gold from the Ags, but not that important. Centaur Warrener got everything he could really need. And Dying has the mech. Not really anything else that the Wisp needs to pick up at this point. Ow. The missile. The levels on these heroes as well. Nine gyro got to eight tusk. Eight dazzle. Wind Ranger is eleven. Also tiny is at thirteen. The Queen of Pain is at fourteen. Tiny will move up the hill and just cleave these down. How's the hyper stone now? 221 damage, so much damage just from the grow. hundred bonus damage. Links onto the Wind Ranger, she does get her E off, but again, Tiny, no! Sorry, Tusk, no, not like this. Tusk delayed on the saves and just bringing the Wind Ranger back, back towards the Tiny Tiny, taking quite a lot of damage now. Buff Boy Long Range Nukes trying to finish him off, but it's not going to be enough, still has the Aegis anyway. Now, Soul Rip, Fossil Chargers. Back up the hill he goes and. Very nearly a dead gyro got to the cooldown. Does happen. Centaur is here, gets a stomp. Queen of Pain blinks in, finishes off the gyro. She's still got an orchid available. Very nearly dead. Nice. Don't come able to finish it off. JK, look at all these heals. Meanwhile, Tiny just pounding on the tower. Dazzler tries to heal all the Night Stalker, but he goes down. Queen of Pain blinks forwards and gets tossed further forwards. She's actually going to go down here. Wind Ranger gets that kill for 900 gold. Tiny takes a tower down. Wind Ranger also now gets the Centaur. Buyback from the Night Stalker and the Dazzle. This might be the Tiny going down for a second time. There's a lot of heals going on. The relocate just in time. That was so close. There was no void there to cancel that. No one dying left her. 1v1 with the Night Stalker, but the Night Stalker will run the other way, try to find somebody else, and now Tiny wants to re-engage. The Dazzle will go down, but the Gyro and the Wind Ranger, they're still here, so is the Tusk. It's a 2v4 right now. And Dying has the mech. Tiny will just TP himself away. This was not the fight that TP to safety at the University of Nottingham were looking for. They did get the tower. He did a little bit of damage to the racks, and melee will heal up. I guess the buybacks that they got there somewhat paid for. Big streaks that they lost, mostly. Well, it's the Centaur and the Queen of Pain. That must have been over 2,000 gold going the way of the Wind, Wind Ranger, and yeah. Now she's finished the Aghanim Scepter. Another 1,400 in pocket. Probably going to be going for the Crystalist next. Now up to level 13. Tiny does spot out the Night Stalker. Gets an avalanche, tosses him back to. I think the Centaur there. Centaur blinks forwards. Now they're going to push in this mid lane. 
another tier 3 to clear out, they might rotate towards bot instead, no centaur stays on the high ground. Tiny picks up the moon shard, he's going to be hitting really fast, now wind ranger, uses the focus fire onto the centaur, but the return damage is going to do quite a lot right now, now the moon shard, what's that tiny? Out of the gyro, Queen of Pain taking a lot of damage, does get soul rips and a few heals from the Wisp, somehow keep her alive for so long, Tusk finally gets the kill, Windrager has to buy back but there are no more no buybacks available, Tusk and Dazzle had already used theirs, the Rex are going to be going down, actually Tusk does have his buyback, he used it now, melee racks are already gone, Windranger doing so much damage in these fights but Tiny turns back, Tusk will snowball to try and keep the t Wind Ranger away, but he's cleaving through the Tusk onto the Wind Ranger. He's nearly dead from this. The Tusk forwards, undying splat, just about gets it. Now there's a buyback from the Queen of Pain. One set of racks is taken down. Tiny will he want to move forwards to another one. Nearly all these heroes are alive now. Everyone but the Wind Ranger doesn't have a buyback. Already used. Queen of Pain now has the Ags on top of the Orchid. Tiny now hits level 16, buys a Mask of Madness just for even more attack speed. Gonna pound through these racks, no fortification available and the actually can't even do anything about this. They just watch, their base gets completely demolished. Now they're gonna move up to the top lane. Overcharge not even activated for the attack speed, now it is. Try to take out the Wisp, but the Guardian Graves are used. I'm dying, saving lives. Never don't give up. Tiny. Pounds through the Gyrocopter. Queen of Pain gets a double kill. Dazzle and Tusk going down. Centaur chasing the Night Stalker all the way back into base. Queen of Pain doesn't have an ultimate yet, but... Nice Shackle Shock. Queen of Pain to Undying. But Wisp moves forwards, gets the heals, and in the meantime, Tiny has taken Mega Creeps. He doesn't care about this fight. The team making room for him. Now the Dazzle and the Gyrocopter about to respawn. Orchid and his ult up onto the Wind Ranger, but she's already in base. Guardian Gree is popped again. These heroes barely taking damage. Tiny has picked up another Moon Shard. This has got to be very near max attack speed. Yeah, it is. And now we'll just be pounding through the Ancient. They're going to make one last stand here to hold down on the side. Orchid. Also over onto the Gyro, but... 45 Centaur blinks forwards. Stun onto two Wind Rangers, taking quite a lot of damage here. And that's going to be the end of it. A fairly clean 2-0 victory for the University of Nottingham. Knock UCL out of the tournament here. is a single elimination best of three and just great play there that fight on the bottom lane blew me away the four man stomp into three man double edge and four man screw uh, sonic wave plowed through those heroes and it just seems like there was no stopping the fight from there on 750 gpm in a 28 minute game on the tiny The Wisp really doing a lot of work there. Not only really great aggressive play early on, but relocates at the perfect times. Loads of heals right where they, right that where they were needed.